The Road of Eldrain is full of some of the most flavorful cards I've ever seen. Magic also has a history of making busted and dumb cards. What we're going to talk about today is a combination of both. Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. We are here today to talk about an extra magical, insane, busted, dumb magic card. And speaking of extra magic, look what I've done. My torso, it has disappeared. I am just arms and a head. If I edited this properly, you may just see me standing here in a shirt if I didn't do it right. But speaking of magic, just want to let you guys know that yesterday, YouTube like Thanos snapped away over a hundred of my subscribers in the blink of an eye. I think it was a glitch. So you may want to double check and make sure that you're subscribed to the channel if you want to be. And if you never want to miss a video, hop into my Discord because I make sure to post all of my videos and all of my live streams there. That being said, it is time to take a look at the card we are going to be discussing today. The Magical Mirror! So what do we have, my friends? We have the Magic Mirror. Now this is a concept that we all know. The whole mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest of them all? Why the magic historian, of course. He's such a sexy, sexy lady. So <laughs> anyhow, this magic mirror is not the exact same kind of mirror, but it is a mirror that you can ask questions of. So I wanna talk about the mechanics of the card because I think it's a very powerful card. I also want to talk about the flavor of the card, specifically when it comes to Throne of Eldraine and the world that exists in, because this card is fantastic on, on multiple levels. So let's start it out here. We've got three blue, six colorless. It is a legendary artifact, which makes perfect sense because there's only one of them. If you watched yesterday's video, you will have noticed that the, the Garenbrig Castle is not a legendary land, but it feels like it should be because there's only one of it, right? There's not multiple. Anyhow, this is a legendary artifact. It costs one less mana to cast for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard. You have no maximum hand size, and at the beginning of your upkeep, put a knowledge counter on the magic mirror. Then draw a card for each knowledge counter on the magic mirror. So we have something that's gonna let you draw a ton of cards over time. It also makes it so that you have no maximum hand size and you can get it out for as cheap as three blue mana. Now this card is actually a great poster boy for the concept of why Wizards of the Coast needs to color align their artifacts. Because if this was available to every deck and every color, this would be stupid. Nine mana seems like a lot for this, but we've seen with cards like Terramander that has that adapt that costs a lot of mana, but if you have instants or sorcerers in your graveyard, it reduces the cost of that. We've seen that this ability to cheapify your cards is incredibly powerful. So with this card, if you could actually just have it as a nine colorless artifact, it would be far, far too easy and abusable. Can you imagine a red deck getting to use this dirty nonsense? Can you imagine that? Now, the flavor behind the magic mirror in the Throne of Eldraine world is this magic mirror is sentient. It is basically self-owned. As far as I understand, in the actual Throne of Eldraine novel, you don't have the, a situation where the magic mirror is owned by one individual who's able to draw on all of its knowledge. The magic mirror is its own boss, essentially. It is not something you can command. That's not actually how you get knowledge out of it. Now, the way that I view this is we as planeswalkers are so powerful that we can subsume the will of this magic mirror. But in normal circumstances on the world of Aldrain, the magic mirror serves its own ends. And if you actually want to get knowledge from the magic mirror, you have to bring knowledge that is of interest to it. Now, I don't want to go into major spoilers for the Throne of Eldraine novel because me and Aetherhub are doing a full lore storyboard of this. We have a number of videos that'll come out 
covering the story, the first of which should have actually released today if everything went to plan. So I'm not going to go into detail too much about the Magic Mirror. I will let you know this, the Magic Mirror is interested in knowledge it does not already possess. If you wish to gain audience with the Magic Mirror, it actually requires that you have some kind of, essentially it's gonna have to be a secret. You're going to need to bring a secret to the Magic Mirror because otherwise it's been around forever collecting up knowledge. The Magic Mirror actually has merfolk or undines as they're called in Eldrain that serve it. The Magic Mirror is normally completely submerged underwater. In the art, and we will go more in depth with the art, but in the art you can see that there's this pedestal in front of the mirror and there's all this water rushing around it and there's all this water beneath it. Well, that's because normally the magic mirror is completely under water. That's how the mirror protects itself from being bothered and having its time wasted so most people can't actually gain an audience with the mirror. We find in Throne of Eldraine, we have in, in the book, I should say, we have individuals who are rebuffed. They are turned away by the magic mirror, but we do have people who also manage to gain an audience with the magic mirror. And again, I'm keeping it very vague because I don't want to spoil our storyline videos. But once those are done, I'll have more freedom to talk about the different aspects. But either way, this magic mirror is normally completely underwater and it is served by merfolk who presumably also somehow feed off the knowledge or so there's something that ties them to the mirror that is not 100% explained but that's actually all right now when you think of a magic mirror from the concept of okay the magic mirror will only deal with people who have Knowledge it does not. Well, let's take a look at the way the card operates. First of all, you can pay the full nine casting costs and just have it under your control as a planeswalker. But it costs one less to cast for each instant or sorcery in your graveyard. Now, that could represent the fact that as a planeswalker, you will have traveled to all kinds of different planes and gathered all kinds of different magic. And these magics would be of interest to the magic mirror. So each one could be a chunk of knowledge that the mirror wishes to have. And as a result, because it's curious about you and the magic you have, it's easier to bring it under your control because it seems like a mutually beneficial situation where you will gain knowledge from the mirror, but at the same time, it's going to gain knowledge of the grander multiverse through you. Because again, remember, this mirror is sentient. It is not an inert, unthinking object like an ax. This is a mirror with a mind. So you have the first ability to me, which represents the, oh wow, okay, you have information that I can use. I'm interested in this. The second ability represents the mirror making capable of you having access to infinite knowledge. That's why there's no maximum hand size. Your normal constraints of your planeswalker mind are widened and your horizons are widened by having possession of this magic mirror and the knowledge contained within. And obviously when it comes to the next ability where you put a counter on it each turn during your upkeep and draw cards equal to the number of counters on it, that to me is like the longer you commune with the mirror, the more rapidly you're able to sieve through all the different secrets that it has to find the knowledge that you specifically want, the more you attune yourself to the mirror, so the better it overall works for you. Honestly, the flavor on this card feels really, really well put together. And the power level, this is the kind of card that if it doesn't get answered quickly, you're just gonna blow your opponent out of the water. Especially if you're playing some sort of control deck, you're just gonna have a massive fistful of answers that's replenishing itself. You won't even have to be picky with the things that you're countering because you have access to such an insane font of information. Now, when we turn and look at the artwork, we see that this is an absolutely gorgeous card. When this artwork was originally spoiled, when we just had a, like an artwork showcase from Throne of Eldraine back during, um, I believe it was the Comic-Con that they showed us this, when I saw this, I desperately wanted to know what this card was. I absolutely love so much this. I love the epic scale of the mirror. I love the construction of the mirror. It's very ornate at the top. It's got almost, it's almost like it's got like a regal crown of its own. You can see a crazy amount of light emanating from the mirror. This is not light that's being reflected 
by something else. You can see that because the way that the light is coming down on that angle, there's not, there's not like a spotlight down on the ground behind this mage, behind this planeswalker that's blasting up towards the mirror for the light to reflect down like this. This light, in my perception, is actual magical knowledge being conveyed to you. This is the magic mirror communicating with you, sharing its knowledge, and it comes in this sort of prismatic, misty spray and reflection of light. I love all the waterfalls that are going on in the background, all the water that cascades down off the sides of the mirror as well. Like it's built, the fountains are built into the sides of the mirror and the water that's coating the entire floor as well with this little pedestal. Because remember, all of this would normally be submerged. The entire room, you can see there are holes along the walls that are like raining water down, or not raining water down, but like pouring, cascading water down the sides. Now there's gonna be holes like this all throughout this chamber. And imagine how much water it takes to fill this chamber. Look at the size of the, like that's a human sized individual on the pedestal. Think about the immensity, the immensity of this. Imagine what it would be like to be a regular everyday citizen of Eldraine and be granted like the chance to commune with this mirror. How insignificant would it make you feel? Because you're just there to barter with your one secret. Basically what the residents of Eldraine normally do with the mirror is they bring it a secret and in exchange they're able to ask for a piece of information. And the mirror, when you get close enough to the mirror, it actually mutes the sound of all the water. So when you're walking up to the mirror, there will be this cascading, deafening sound of water roaring all around you. But once you get close enough and step up on that pedestal, all of a sudden, it's perfect silence. So the mirror can hear you perfectly, you can hear the mirror perfectly, if the sound key doesn't work properly in this video, you'll also be able to hear that guy who just started to start mowing the lawn in the middle of my video. I hate it when there are factors outside of my control. Maybe you won't be able to hear it and I'll just sound like a crazy person yelling. That's the best scenario. Anyhow, imagine, imagine going to a mirror that knows virtually everything that's going on on your entire world. The, it's, it's an intimidating scenario. What is the right question to ask a mirror like this? What's even the right way to handle it? It was pretty interesting. When we see characters interact with it from the novel, what happens is as soon as the mirror feels like its time is being wasted, it starts to draw the water level up again. So it let the water level all the way down because someone was bringing a secret to barter with it. And then all of a sudden, it thinks someone's messing around. So the water starts to rush in. And then they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. And basically like, I do have something worthwhile for you. The waters cease, but they don't recede. Right? And as soon as your audience is done with the magic mirror, those waters, they all start to rush back up. So you have to flee so that you don't drown. Now in this artwork, what's depicted to me is a planeswalker linking with this mirror. And that's why they're standing there with their legs apart, their arms kind of thrust backwards, just in this power stance where it's like, Hah! as a bunch of magical knowledge is just flowing into them as they've, they've bound this magic mirror to your will. Imagine being a planeswalker and you find the throne, the, the, uh, the plane of Eldraine, and then you learn that there's a magic mirror with essentially an infinite amount of information about the world you're on. Imagine seeking out that mirror and finding out it actually exists and then being able to bind that mirror to your will and summon it across the multiverse. It doesn't matter what plane you're on, you can just summon this mirror and bond with it and use its knowledge. Dude, I love the artwork of this card. I love the flavor of this card. It fits perfectly into the story for Throne of Eldraine. Like, this is such an excellent execution. It's such a cool idea when, like, the whole magic mirror on the wall just being used by, like, a vain witch who just wants to make sure there's no one more attractive than them. That is not nearly as compelling as a mirror that knows all of the secrets of this world and possibly other worlds as well, right? Like that, that is really, really, really epic. So my friends, that concludes my discussion of the magic mirror and its broken dumbness, because this seems like a busted, 
busted card. And the flavor is Mwah! Mama Mia meatballs and daddy loves it. So good, so good. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Also make sure if you enjoy what I'm doing, hit that subscribe button. Because a bunch of people, like I said, got Thanos snapped out of existence. I need more souls to feed my soul vaults. <laughs> also, hop in the Discord. The Discord is good times, all right? That's a good way to know about everything that I have going on. Big shout out to my patrons and channel members. Thank you very much for financially supporting my work. It is incredibly meaningful to me. I think you guys are fantastic. To everyone I say, thanks for being here, and I shall see you guys tomorrow.